MMAfighting.com and we are at the UFC 242 press conference in London, England today and I am joined by UK OG from the MMA scene, Louise Green. Now Louise, what did you think of that? That was a very subdued, I mean let's be honest, maybe I'm thinking that because of the last time we saw Khabib it was very chaotic. But what did you think of that today? It was very calm. You can see these guys have a lot of respect for each other and you can see that neither guy really wants to go down the superlative route that we saw last time in October. Yeah, completely different atmosphere. I mean, Khabib, I mean, I suppose Khabib is quite calm anyway. Uh, very, very calm. Uh, Dustin, there's, you know, there's no trash talk there like we've seen before with Connor. Obviously, there's so much hype. This is very relaxed, uh, very calm. Um, very civilized. Is, uh, yeah. So different for Khabib coming off of that last fight with Connor. And um, I don't know, it's, it's going to be exciting. It's, it's a little bit different. Uh, a massive opportunity for Dustin Poirier, obviously, to, to become the, uh, to unify the title. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how this kind of progresses in the run up to the fight. No, uh, the MMA crazy team were here, of course, the last time at the UFC, was it 189 yeah. World Tour? This was in London as well. I'd say a very different dynamic this time uh, compared to that, that time in 2015. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful venue, absolutely beautiful. Uh, so it's a lovely setup. Um, London is, you know, is such a hub, especially because you have so many people from across Europe coming. I mean, there was the guys here from Poland. Uh, Russia, um, so it's a great place for everyone in Europe to come together. So um, it's a yeah, I mean, superb spot to have it today. Did to Tony Ferguson's uh, title hopes take another dash today? Because when Khabib was asked about it, at one stage he said, "Oh yeah, I wouldn't fight Conor. I want someone with a, a long uh, winning streak like Tony." Mm -hmm. And then when he was directly asked about Tony, he said, "Well, why didn't he take the Max Holloway fight?" You know. Do you think he maybe got pushed back a bit today, or do you still feel as though after this fight, no matter what happens, he's going to be the guy that should fight for the title next? I think, yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, eventually, no, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. I mean, it hasn't happened, what, four times before. I think he just doesn't want to overlook Dustin. Uh, Dustin, obviously, he's you know, a superior striker. You know, he, he, he does have a lot of, uh, of weapons in mm. his arsenal that he can use against Khabib. So I, I just don't think, I think he knows it's inevitable that they're going to meet. Uh, he did say that he was uh, open to fighting Ferguson and GSP uh, in, in terms of kind of um, securing his legacy in the division. So it's going to happen, but I just don't think he's willing to elaborate and kind of Right. entertain that. He doesn't want to take the heat off this situation, basically. I think so, and, and I think because... Uh, the Tony Ferguson win is so fresh in everyone's minds as well. Everyone's still kind of uh, listening to what Tony has said about obviously his wants mm. um, of fighting Khabib, and everyone knows that's you know what's jinx kind of at this stage. Let's be honest. How many times? I mean, every time they they book it, I get so nervous. I mean, I still want to see it though, right? Oh yeah, I think oh yeah yeah definitely. I mean, but it just seems uh, that it's I don't know a bit a bit jinx, isn't yeah, it? it? It's is. a bit I strange. Uh, another thing I was going to ask you about was just just Dustin Poirier being the underdog, right? Because I can remember ahead of that Max Holloway fight, everybody I talked to about that fight, they, they were picking Max. They, Dustin didn't even come into the conversation for a lot of people. Yeah. You listen to Khabib talking today, he, he's talking, you asked him a great question. You were like, how does Dustin um, compare to the other great strikers you faced? And he said, well, Conor McGregor and, and Michael, Michael Johnson, they, they knocked this guy out, so I've already beaten those guys. Do, do you think he might be overlooking Dustin a bit, or is this just the, the championship aura you have to give off when, you, when you've got that belt wrapped around your waist? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you have to believe that you are the better man and that you are going to come out the, the victor, especially as he is the interim champ now. Uh, he wants to, you know, I don't know. I, 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 he, I don't think he's overlooking Dustin. I know he, he knows that there are some... some um, some aspects that he has to be careful of mm. in terms of his boxing, his striking. Um, but I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think he's doubting himself against Dustin Poirier. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminded me of the, the first time I, I saw uh, Jose Aldo meet the press, or when I've seen John Jones meet the press, or even Connor, Ronda Rousey, yeah. uh, Joanna. They give off this vibe, this championship vibe, and I really got that feeling today. Did you? Like, yeah. it really feels like he's the king here, and even the way he was answering questions, you're like, mm. he's really regal now all of a sudden, I feel. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that calmness as well. Mm. Uh, very calm, very cool, uh, and it makes you want to kind of 
divulging. I mean, I, I just find him very mysterious as yeah. well. I don't know what it is about him that's you want to know a little bit more. Um, He's become more guarded, hasn't he? As, as in his time in the UFC, like when he started off, he was very, I felt, way more extroverted than we see him today. This is kind of, this. I think this comes along with being the champion when you get that kind of presence and aura about you, do you? Yeah, I mean, he was saying about, you know, when he goes to Dubai, when he goes to the Middle East, he can't walk down the street. Yeah. Uh, you know, he has so much attention. Um, so I think that's just what he has to do to protect himself. Uh, protect his family mm. as well uh, you know he's so private with his family his you know children and his wife so I think you kind of have to do that um, unless you want everyone to know everything and for your family to be in the spotlight as well which obviously he doesn't yeah. so uh, so I think that's just um, the way that he likes to be as a person I suppose. You mentioned it there now, and you know, if you saw the press conference, Khabib was talking about you know his support in the Middle East. This is going to be very much a hometown crowd for him. How much of an upset would it be if Dustin went in there and uh, you know and beat him? Because it feels like even the way Khabib's talking about it, like this isn't really a contest for him. Like not not that it's not a contest, but he you can tell he, he's very confident going into this one. Would this be one of the big upsets in UFC history if this happened? Even though we know Dustin is a fantastic fighter. I mean, yeah, I mean, look at look at what he did against Max Holloway. I mean, everyone had counted him out, and uh, he just looked ph phenomenal in that fight. And, uh, yeah, like you said, it is, I mean, the Middle East, you know, uh, you know, Muslim country, mm. he is going to be the star that night. And um, for Dustin to be able to pull off an upset would be massive, absolutely massive, especially because, not only because of the region, but I think because of... Khabib, who he is, his undefeated streak, his his pressure, his wrestling pressure. Mm. Um, I think if Dustin was able to do it maybe on the feet, uh, then I think that would be absolutely massive. Be crazy. Yeah. I feel like, um, you know, th th does this feel big? I mean, when usually when we see these kind of tours going on, these media tours are happening, you know, far out from events. We saw it with 189, as you mentioned earlier, with the Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor. Does this feel big to you? Does it get that? Does it have that magic feeling yet? Like, to just to tell you guys at home, there was about 25 security guards here today. It felt very, uh, we were building up to something big, and then the guys were, of course, very calm. But do, do you think this will go down as one of the biggest fights of this year when all is said and done? I think it's massive for the lightweight division. So I think in terms of the division it is. Um, at the moment, I don't feel the hype, but no. maybe it's because we're so far out. Mm. And because maybe it is in the Middle East, maybe that's why. Yeah. I know they are doing a lot of events on the run-up uh, to the fight. Um, and it's a big market for them. They obviously have a new deal, so they're going to be going back regularly. And they wanna five, time, five times over the next five years, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they want to headline each one with a championship fight, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, so that market is massive. Um, so I believe they'll probably do maybe some something special in the Middle East um, in the run-up to make it a little bit more exciting. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel it yet. Mm. Uh, but I think on the run-up, I think that's when it will start to kick in. Well, that was great. That's I think that's all we have here. But thank you very much, Louise Green of MMA Crazy, the OGs. Shout out to Lee Williams also. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, thanks to Abby for setting up our camera. Big respect. And we'll see you again. All the best. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.